What's up guys and welcome back to another math puzzle and before I explain the math puzzle I just want to say this one is dedicated to one of my students Tyler so what's up Tyler I hope you enjoy it this one is more of a word-based math puzzle but it's pretty interesting and pretty fun we just got to make sure we understand and know the definitions of a couple terms so it says find three consecutive natural numbers whose product and sum are equal so first of all we need to understand what does that word consecutive mean that means next to one another so when we're talking about natural numbers and by the way what are natural numbers natural numbers are whole numbers that are positive and greater than zero so three four five six seven eight a hundred a million a billion etc so we need to find three consecutive natural numbers meaning numbers in a row like four five and six so on and so forth whose product and sum are equal so these three natural consecutive numbers are going to have when you multiply them together that's product it's going to be the same as the sum when you add them all together go ahead and hit that pause button and see if you can figure it out when you're ready hit play and i'll give you the explanation All right, now I'm gonna show you how to find these three numbers. And there's two ways that we can do it. The first way is more on a logical basis. So I'm just gonna show you how to find these basically with a little trial and error. So the first thing, let's take that four, five, six that we were thinking of. So four, five, six, four, five, six. And let's look at the sum versus the product. So the product we're multiplying, the sum we're adding. So let's take a little thing here. So we'll say here's sum and here's the product. So if I look at this, I got four plus five plus six, and that of course is 15. And here I've got the product four times five times six, that's 20 times six, that's 120. So we can see those are quite far apart. Let's try another set. Let's try five, six, and seven. So we're gonna add those together. And we got five times six times seven. Here we've got 18. And here we've got 210. So it seems like the gap got wider, right? So here it was a gap of 105. And here it's a gap of 192. So it seems like as the numbers went up, the gap got bigger. So my normal inclination therefore is then we gotta choose smaller numbers. And what's the smallest we can go? The smallest we can go is one, two, and three versus one times two times three and what is this well of course one plus two plus three is six and the other side one times two times three is six and those are indeed equal now i'm going to show you the algebraic way to solve for something like this and i'm just going to let you know that the algebraic way is going to look way more complicated in this situation but the algebraic way can have a lot of merit depending on the complexity and difficulty of a problem like this so just be advised this is kind of how you would set it up so if I'm talking about three consecutive terms, what are they? Well, they're all going to be, the first one might be X. The second one is going to be X plus one, right? Because it's one more than the previous. And the third one is going to be X plus two, because this is going to be one more than that guy. And the sum of these is we're going to add them up like that. The product would be X times X plus one times X plus two. And we're trying to figure out when these two are equal so we boom, just set them equal to each other like that and we're good to go. All right, now let's use our algebra to see if we can figure this out. So we add the X's up on the, le on the left side and we get three X, one plus two equals three. And then what about on the right side? This is a little trickier. I'm gonna foil these two inside binomials first and that's gonna give me X squared, right? Plus two X plus X, which is three X and then plus one times two, which is two. And then I'm gonna finish distributing that final X. So now I've got X cubed plus three X squared plus two X. Okay, equals 3x plus 3. Now I've got this big polynomial. The main thing that you want to recognize in this case is we want to set everything equal to 0, and then we can try and hopefully factor and solve like that. So first I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides, and I'm also going to subtract 3 from both sides. So those are going to cancel, and now we got something really good. We got 0 equals x cubed plus 3x squared 
minus x minus three. Now you might look at this and think this looks really difficult. This is in fact factorable, even though it's got this big degree of three, we can factor it and here's how. We're going to do something called factoring by grouping. So I'm gonna look at this binomial and this binomial and see what we can factor out. So out of this one in front, I can factor out an x squared. So I'm gonna make it x squared times x, right? Because x squared times x is x cubed plus three. Here, I'm gonna factor out a negative one. And again, I've got x plus three left inside and that's the key, right? If I can get these two binomials to be the same, this is actually pretty good. So now for the final step, I'm gonna factor out the x plus three from both of these guys. So I kind of get zero equals x plus three. And what's left over is that x squared minus one like that. All right, now we've got something solvable, okay? Because what, how is this gonna equal zero? This is gonna equal zero when this guy equals zero or and or when this guy equals zero. So what makes this binomial go to zero? That would be negative three. What makes this one go to zero? Well, there's two options would be negative one, right? Negative one squared is one minus one is zero or positive one. So these are my three different possibilities for X, which by the way, they all work and they all satisfy this equation. But we have the restriction that these have to be natural numbers. So I can't have negatives as my solution, which means my X value has to be one. If my X value is one, X plus one, which is the second number has to be two and X plus two, which is the third number has to be one plus two, which is three. So your three numbers are one, two, and three. I hope you enjoyed this math puzzle. And if you did, please click that like button. And if you want to see more math puzzles on the regular, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.